What is going on guys, welcome to a new video. So I haven't been uploading them for the past week, but I have been keeping up with all my DMs and personal messages. If you've contacted me on Facebook or Twitter, whatever it is, then you'll know I've been getting back to you. Um, and I really like talking to you guys then on a one-to-one -one basis um, for a couple of reasons really. Number one, it allows me to give really kind of personalized information or advice to you guys because one thing with YouTube then is there's so many different variables and factors when it comes to Shopify and dropshipping. It's really difficult to give really personalized advice that's going to apply to everyone. And number two then is for video ideas really. The more I talk to you guys, the more I get to know what your struggles are. And it allows me to do videos like this then where I can give out kind of broad information that's going to apply to a lot more people and ultimately then help people out because that's pretty much the reason then why I started this YouTube channel. So what I've done then is I've gone through all the past messages pretty much for the past couple of weeks and made a list of all the struggles that everybody's happening, um, come up with like the top three ones and these tips then are going to be kind of based around what those struggles are. So for example then I see it all the time, people get in touch saying they're getting loads of traffic but zero sales and they'll send me their store link and they'll say it must be my store, can you just check out my store and see where the problem is. So I'll look at their store then and more often than not their store is actually really good. So probably out of every 10 store links people send me, probably seven or eight are actually really decent. Um, so the problem isn't with their store then, it can be with something else. And then I see it on the other hand as well, the other side of it, so they can have a really decent store but they're struggling to get the traffic. So they're paying a really high CPM or they're paying a really expensive cost per link click and they're just not sure what to do. So these three tips then, they're gonna be based around the three kind of main things people are having struggles with. So number one then is picking that really good product that's easy to sell. Number two then is how to market it effectively on Facebook. And then number three, and probably the most important point as well, and I don't see a lot of people talking about this as well, so make sure you stay tuned, or if you have to, just skip ahead to this point, which is ultimately then how to identify problems within your business, within the structure and actual business model. So people only tend to get in contact with me then when they're having a problem then, and they're not quite sure what to do or where to go next. So what I wanna show you guys then is ultimately how the process works, how to identify where the problem is and then ultimately and most importantly then come up with a solution because if you know where the problem is then coming up with a solution is going to be a whole lot easier. So that being said that's the topic of the video, thank you for tuning in, I hope you enjoy it and let's get straight into it. What is going on guys, welcome to my computer. So I'm pretty excited about this one to be honest because there's some really good information in this video. I'll put a lot of time into coming up with these points and choosing the information I wanna to give to you guys that's gonna help you out um, the most. So one thing I do ask is please do just watch the full video, try and understand exactly what I'm saying and any questions at all, then please don't hesitate to ask. I wanna make sure then that you guys fully understand and what I'm gonna be talking about in this video. So that being said then, let's jump straight into point number one, which is picking winning products. So the number one fault I see people making is not choosing a passion product. And what I mean by that then is a product that when people see it on Facebook, then they just don't get excited about it. So it doesn't matter how good your fridge is, people don't get excited about fridges. And I know that's an extreme example and most people aren't gonna be drop shipping fridges, but hopefully the kind of principle um, translates across because that's exactly what we need to do. We need to choose a product that when people see it, they just get so excited about it that they have to go and see how much it is. Or if not that, then they have to tag somebody or share it on their Facebook page they have to show other people um, what this product is because at the end of the day we are advertising a product on Facebook and Facebook is a social media platform we have to sell a social product so we need to talk about people being sociable then it's all about emotions and people getting excited or angry um, or passionate about a certain subjects or whatever it is so we have to choose then a product that exactly fits the market or fits the place in which we're going to be marketing it so i've got a couple of examples to show you guys and they're kind of like the stereotypical ones um, and some of these products i've actually seen people selling on their stores and just like really been struggling with so um, number one then is watches now watches can be a really good niche to go into but you have to do it the right way and depending on what kind of watches you sell is obviously going to determine the way you market yourself and put your message across so all i've done then is put in watch as you can see if we just filter by orders 
So even if we look at all the best sellers, now these are obviously really nice watches because some of these have thousands and thousands of orders. In fact, all of them do, but they're not really that appealing to one specific audience, if that makes sense. So even if we look at this best-selling watch, like it looks like a really nice watch, but if you saw that on Facebook, then it's not enough to make you take time out of your day and share it with someone. No one's gonna see that. Well, this is just my personal opinion, but I don't believe that many people are gonna see that watch and just like, it's not gonna connect with them. We need to pick a product, then it's gonna connect with people. When they see it, then they have some sort of, like emotional response to it. And like I mentioned earlier, it just makes them want to share it or at least click on it and, and what essentially want to find out more. So one thing to keep in mind then is we want to pick a product that when somebody sees it, it triggers an emotional response. And if we compare these watches then against this one, so a pug watch, then which one is going to get a response and actually resonate with our audience the most? It's going to be this pug one because it speaks to a specific audience. And the key word there is specific. If we go too broad, then without the branding, in and the back end of that, then it's gonna be really difficult to to essentially make sales to begin with, whereas we don't have to have a big well-known brand behind us to sell this watch effectively because all we need to do is target people who essentially own pugs because pugs are quite a peculiar quite a peculiar breed and people tend to choose pugs because of the way they look and the fact that they look different and their size and people think they're cute and so on so when somebody sees a watch that has a pug on they're going to have that same emotional response and that connection because they already own a pug dog and therefore they're more likely to buy this product moving on to the second example jewelry again i see so many people in the jewelry niche and again it's a really good niche and you can make so much money in it but you need to choose a specific audience that you're going to be targeting and going after so I filtered by orders. Now these don't have that many orders, but they're gonna be decent products if you just look at the reviews and so on. And I see so many people selling rings and different bracelets and necklaces and just failing because they don't appeal to a specific audience. So if we compare this, like these pieces of jewelry then against some golf jewelry, then this speaks to a certain and specific audience like there's no two ways about it anybody who plays golf then like for example i play golf i know like the different brand names and so on i'm um, just seeing there like they're pretty cool i would actually consider them as like um some sort of like little gift to give somebody who plays golf because they know tight list their cufflinks so immediately you've got your audience and it's gonna appeal to a specific type of person so those two examples being shown then let's go back to the document the next point is price range now by the way guys any questions on this at all please don't hesitate to ask so the next point to consider then is price range and this is really important and as it says there in brackets then it's got to fit the platform 100 percent it's got to fit the platform so if we're advertising on facebook then people when they want to buy something they don't go on facebook and search for it they go on google or amazon and we have to take that into consideration when choosing a product. If we're gonna go ahead and try and sell a thousand pound product on Facebook, then it's gonna be difficult unless we're retargeting them, unless they, we know they're already interested in that product, then it's gonna be really difficult because essentially what it's gonna be is it's gonna be an impulse buy. In fact, I wanna put that on there because um, it's a really key word to this point. Um, if you don't know what it means, and it basically means people aren't planning on spending money, they just see your product and it resonates and they like it so much, then they impulse buy it, they just buy it um, without any prior planning. So we have to take that into consideration then when choosing our product. So like I said, if we choose a thousand dollar product, um, even anything over kind of like a hundred pound, then that's kind of like pushing the boundaries of an impulse buy product. If you just think about, yourself and how much you would spend on something without thinking about it the chances are then you won't spend more than a hundred pounds or a hundred dollars without any kind of prior thinking or prior planning um, to doing so so you have to apply this to facebook as well people aren't on there to spend money and to shop so you have to accommodate that when it comes to choosing your products so when it comes to price range then try and stick below that hundred pound mark now in my personal opinion you want to sell a product that's cheap as possible while still being able to make a profit because because it's always, always, always gonna be easier to sell a product that's 10 pound than a product that's 100 pound, just because there's more people, there's a bigger market um, for people who essentially can afford a 10 pound product than a 100 pound product, it's just common sense. So when it comes to doing a price range, then try and stick below that 100 pound mark, try and get as low as possible while still being able to make a profit. 
Moving on to number three then, choose a sub niche. Now, the reason I haven't just left it as niche and the, the word sub is in bold is because the word niche has kind of lost its power. Now, I've been guilty of this, of, cho of like pretty much calling everything a niche. So the dog, if you take dogs, dogs aren't a niche. Like if we just look up the definition of niche, it's denoting or relating to product services or interests that appeal to a small specialized section of the population. And there's a couple of key words there. So small and specialized and section. So if we just take the dog niche as an example, in fact, I've got my audience insights here. Um, let's just put it in here and see how many people actually come up. So it's got a monthly, and this is just monthly active people as well, is 60 to 70 million people. So that's by no means small or specialized. So dogs aren't a niche, you wanna sub niche it down. And what I mean by that then, is pretty much find a niche within a niche. So if we were to choose say pugs, then pugs obviously come under dogs. And if we just get rid of that, then as we can see, that's more more of a small specialized section of the population. So that's what I call a sub niche then, which is basically a niche within a niche. And therefore you've got a better chance of finding that person who is super passionate about your product. And that brings us on to point number two then, which is how to market correctly on Facebook. So the first point then is unique ad copy. I think this is gonna be absolutely huge in 2019 because I see so many people kind of just using the same ad copy as everybody else and especially in certain saturated markets if you're putting out the same images and the same videos as everyone else then people are going to kind of switch off to it and they're not really gonna it's not going to stand out to them so what you want to do then is you want to make your ad copy unique to you so make it branded if you have a company logo then even if it's images just put it in the corner or put it somewhere on there to to um, just something new on there to pretty much stand out to people um and if you can, then create a video as well because videos work a lot better on Facebook and with videos as well, if you film them yourself or you can pay somebody to do it for you, then people can't copy it. People can't copy it as it's gonna be your video and unique to you. And therefore, when somebody sees it, then it's gonna be the first time they've seen your video. Um, I have got some examples to show you guys, as you can see here, so make sure you stay tuned and watch them. Um, that's pretty much like the best way. Like when I first started, um, Shopify dropshipping, I learned everything I did by pretty much finding um, and watching what people who are succeeding and doing well and pretty much copying them. Now, not actually taking their actual odd copy, ad copy, but taking the principles and main points of what they're doing um, and doing the same thing. Ty Lopez talks about it all the time. Find somebody who's doing what you wanna do and mirror them. Moving on to point number two then, I don't wanna make this video too long, is find the buyers within a niche to target. So I've done this in previous videos, but this is such a key and important point because the audience in which you target is critical to your success. So we had audience insights open earlier. Um, and one thing I wanna show you guys, so if we just put dogs in here as we did, and if we go on page likes, then this is gonna give us all the top categories. So what this is basically telling us is that people within this dog interest then, these are all the other popular pages that people are liking within that interest. And as we can see then, that a lot of these, if at all any of them are related to dogs. So what that tells us then is people within this interest aren't really passionate about dogs because if they were, then the majority of them would be liking other dog pages and therefore the dog pages would be showing up here if that makes sense. So to illustrate this point then, I'm gonna get rid of that and I'm gonna show you an interest called Your Dog Magazine because I've used this before um, within the dog niche. This is, this is an interest I use quite a lot. And now if we look at all these top categories, then pretty much all of them are related to dogs. So what that tells us then is that people within this interest the main of them, pretty much all of them have a really big interest in dogs because the most popular categories within this interest are other dog categories, if that makes sense. So that tells us then we've got a better chance of finding those people who are really passionate about dogs, really own dogs, and therefore are gonna buy our dog product. So that's a really quick example to show you guys, but hopefully I've put my point across quite well. And hopefully then um, I can help you guys go out and target the buyers within a niche. We don't just wanna target people who are passionate. We wanna target people who are actual buyers because we could show our product to a million people, but unless they're gonna buy the product, um, then, then it's no good. We're not gonna make any money. So point number three then, I wanna show you an example because it's one thing to talk about it, um, but then 
I always find the actual seeing real life examples, um, it's a really good way to learn. So I've featured these guys in a couple of previous videos just because they're doing really well. If you look at um, the amount of traffic they're driving and the numbers they're doing, it's just pretty crazy. And they're a dropshipping store as well. Um, now what all I've done then is I've found them on Facebook, I've clicked on info and ads, and these are the current ads that they're running. So you can see, like point number one is that ad copy is really basic. It pretty much just states exactly what the product does and then it gives them a call to action. So get yours here and then it's a link to the actual product page. So I'm just gonna skip through a couple of these videos just to show you um, and highlight the main points. So number one on this one, you can see it's got people in. People pay more attention to other people and faces. It's been proven that ads with faces and people in um, attract more attention essentially. And the first thing I wanna show as well, the fact that these people look like they're having fun and they're smiling. So I'm just gonna check the volume. Um, and that's just a great way to essentially get people's attention and make them, as I mentioned earlier in the video, have that emotional response to what your product is doing. Now these guys, they use the same actors in their video ads. So I imagine it's a team of people that they send their products to, or it might be them, uh, the actual owners themselves doing these videos, um, which I talked about earlier is a great idea to do because it's unique to these guys and anybody who copies this video, then they can report, get it taken down. And it just makes people more likely to recognize Blue Crate. And this is gonna be the first time they will have seen this actual video ad as well. They're not gonna see anybody else using this same material to market this product. So feel free to go across and check these guys out. I've got no affiliation with these guys. Um, like I said, it's just a good example because they're a company that seems to be doing really well. So definitely want to watch and get some tips and tricks and ideas from. So that is point number two. And moving into the third and final point then, which is a really important point to understand because when it comes to any business then, unless you can identify the problems you're having and ultimately come up with solutions on how to fix them then, you're not gonna succeed. So what I've done then is I've created this highly technical drawing that you guys are gonna love. Um, and here it is, and it just clearly illustrates like the whole purchase process. And I wanna help you guys understand exactly what we're doing and how to fix it then. So. If we take a look at the beginning of the process here, it starts with our Facebook ad. This is the first point in contact with our customer. And essentially, if somebody's gonna make a purchase, this is the exact process they go through. So they see our Facebook ad, they click it, it goes to their product page, our product page, they click add to cart, goes to the cart page, they click initiate checkout, goes to the checkout page, they add their payment info, and then they complete the purchase. So how do you identify problems then? Taking the stereotypical example here of people are getting loads and loads of traffic, but zero sales, then we simply go through the process and we stop whenever we're having a problem. So the ultimate goal then of our Facebook ad is to generate traffic. So obviously the problem isn't there. So people are clicking our ad, they're going to our product page. Now, the next step then of people actually adding to cart, if you're getting loads of traffic but no add to carts, then this is where your problem is. So your problem is on the product page. Then you've got to look at exactly what's on the product page and what could be putting people off. So these are the kind of things then you have to look at. So is it the price? Is your product too cheap or is it too expensive? The product description then, is there spelling mistakes? Have you just copy and pasted it across from AliExpress? Um, is there no reviews? And ultimately then, do we look trustworthy? So um, have we got really decent product images? Have we got the reviews? Um, have we got loads of products in our store to give the impression we're a really big company? Um, have we got loads of methods for people to get in contact? So have we got a Facebook page? Have we got Instagram? Have we got a contact form? Are there details about us? Is there an FAQ? Just things along those lines to make sh people trust us um, and willing to spend their money with us. And that is pretty much essentially it's really simple, but trust me guys, it really works. So taking another example then just quickly for you guys, if you're not getting any traffic at all, so nobody's clicking on your Facebook ad. So the problem then is at the very beginning. So, and therefore we have to look at exactly what goes into a Facebook ad and then that gives us essentially essentially what the potential problems could be. So number one then is the audience. If nobody's clicking on it, then perhaps we're showing it to the wrong type of people. Number two is the product. Perhaps it could be the right audience, it could be a really passionate audience, but if we're just advertising a product that people don't like, then that could be the problem. And then number three, the ad copy. So 
and it could be a really bad image or a really bad video it could be pixelated or it might just actually not show exactly what the product does i've seen people do it before um, they have these really good videos but essentially it doesn't actually show what the product does it's just um, a really bad video actually so i've seen people do it before they put loads of time and effort into finding a really good product and then they just don't market in the right way they don't actually they don't essentially show what the product is or what it's doing like the best tip i can give you guys and i've added it to the to the Google document is show someone having a good time and using your product. That is the best tip that anybody can give you, especially when it comes to marketing on Facebook, because it's the best way to essentially emotionally connect with your audience. If somebody sees somebody happy and using your product, they want to be happy as well. So to do that, they have to buy your product, if that makes sense. And that really is a powerful tip. If there's one tip you take away from this video, then, then just let it be this one. It's really super powerful. If you can do that, um, invest I mean you don't even have to invest a lot you can do it on your phone if you're not that camera shy then just video yourself set your camera up in a, in a certain angle where you can video yourself having a good time with your product or if you just go on fiverr.com or upwork something like that uh, send your product to someone and get them to do it for you or an, an, another kind of clever little way is to send it to an influencer on Instagram that they'll post it on like a story, like actually send them your product, get them to do a little review um, and, and do a little video of them showing themselves using your product on their story or whatever it is. And then obviously just ask for their permission uh, to use that as your Facebook ad. Um, and then that being said, guys, uh, that pretty much wraps up the video. So I'm going to stop it there. If you're still watching, thank you very much. I really do appreciate the support on the channel. Uh, there will be videos coming out. I'm going to come up with some sort of schedule that I can keep to just so you guys can kind of know exactly when new videos are coming out that i can stick to um, and that being said then thank you for tuning in i hope you enjoyed the video please drop a like on the video if you did and i'll see you all in the next one